Hi everyone! Welcome to Rose Hip Knits Podcast, episode 39, I think. My name is Hannah and I am recording this crafty podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry as well as on Instagram. There is a group for the podcast that you can find by searching for Rose Hip Knits Podcast in Ravelry. Uh, under the groups uh, tab and uh, I have an Etsy shop and you can find that by searching for Rosehip Island in Etsy and also there is a blog where I normally post show notes but I didn't last time I didn't quite have the time uh, but the, um, the blog you can find under um, Rosehip Knits blog Rosehip Knits podcast dot blogspot.com and that should be all and um, as you can see I have some beautiful spring flowers here uh, with me today it's still winter here in in Tassie but um, to me it feels like spring because like the weather is now it's probably uh, what spring weather is like in Sweden and Sweden is where I'm from and where I grew up I lived there until I was 24, 25. Um, yes, yeah, so to me it feels like spring, the sun's out, it has been raining a bit earlier but the sun's out now and it's just glorious. It's getting towards um, late afternoon here. I am um, home without anyone else so I've had a very um, creative and um, productive day today. And I decided that a good way to finish off the day would be by recording a podcast. So it wasn't very long ago that I recorded my last episode, but I thought uh, we'll do another one today. So um, thank you everyone for watching, taking the time to come and join me here in my studio. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, uh, thank you for checking out the podcast. Um, and if you have the time and you feel like doing so, I would love to know how you found the podcast. So you can leave me a note in the thread for this episode in the Ravelry group or just under the YouTube video. And I will really appreciate that. Also, thank you to anyone who has had a look at my Etsy shop, who's liked any posts in on Instagram or just in any way and um, showed me your love <laughs> it really makes my day and makes my week and yes it's just um, I love having you guys out there uh, watching and supporting and being part of my crafty life and then what else do I have in my show notes here <laughs> I received some lovely mail yesterday and I like to say Thank you to Nicole from um, Yarn Adelaide podcast, Yarn Adelaide Knits podcast. I always forget that Nicole. Um, Nicole, Nicole sent me a beautiful postcard from Adelaide together with some uh, prices for knit alongs. And the prices were it was this project keeper, and she has made by Color Girl Collective and she will have an Etsy shop um, starting up soon uh, says her note so that's the project keeper there and there's also a set of beautiful lovely stitch markers maybe if I put them this way you'll be able to see a bit better this one says handmade with love and that's stitch markers so yes, made by Color Girl Collective, which is Nicole from Yarn Adelaide Knits Podcast. I just watched her latest episode this morning, actually. Nicole had made some lovely shawls and lots of socks, and um, she's been doing some very nice dyeing, too. Uh, okay, and with these prices for you guys, um, she also sent me some lovely stitch markers. So they were for me and a, a, a mini, 
and some lovely teas. And this one here that I haven't, or two I haven't at all tried before. And I'm really looking forward to having a, a couple of nice cups of tea. I do have a cup of tea with me here today. Although it's really nice and sunny outside, it is winter and it is quite chilly. <laughs> I'm drinking some green jasmine tea, which is um, something I always enjoy. Sometimes I forget about um, about that tea and um, I just love rediscovering it. And um, I always think, why did I not drink that for so long? I just love it. <laughs> Anyway, enough about tea and things like that. Um, so yes, we have these new prices from Nicole. And um, yes, we do have a knit along happening at the moment in our Ravelry group. And that is the Double Dip Dash Cow or Craft Along. And uh, for that, basically post anything that you finish in the thread in Ravelry. There's a crochet knit thread and there's a spinning thread just because I have a spinning price and have a sort of more of a yarny and knitting price so I decided to divide them up into finished object threads um, so yes post anything there it's basically a way of double dipping with the stash dash that the knit girls are hosting and the cow will finish when the stash dash finishes and I am pretty sure it's the 21st of August so you have about another three weeks so um, go ahead and post anything that you've finished since, was it the 25th or 27th of May? All the information will be in the thread. So go and have a look and post your finished items because there's nice prices to win. So do that. And yes, all the information is in the thread in the Ravelry group. All right, so... Uh, today I have some knitting to share with you. I've finished something. I've been working on a few things, some new things. I have been doing some spinning. So I have that to share with you. And um, I have been doing some dyeing. I have a lot of dyeing happening at the moment. So not a lot to show you. Um, but there's something that I, I put up in the shop that I'll just quickly show you towards the end. And... Um, then my big parcel from the Bendigo Woolen Mills arrived today actually and that was the bag that I stuffed with goodies from the back room of Bendigo Woolen Mills when I went there a couple of weeks ago when I visited the Sheba Wool Show in Bendigo so um, the mill had an offer that they'd post your stuff home free of charge so I did that and um, I thought I'll show you a few things that I got and also what my plans are with those things. Okay, let's get into it. So I finished something and you can probably guess what this is. This is something that I had on my needles for a very long time and I got it done. This is the Crayfish Cable and Lace Cow by Christy, Car uh, Layla Caroline Designs. And um, I knit this in the um, Atelier yarn, uh, Meg Gatsby yarn, <laughs> that Meg Gatsby dyed under her Atelier yarn and design label. And this is the single um, merino base, uh, Pinnacle it's called, and this was a one of a kind uh, colorway and it's sort of bluish gray. I stalled a long time on this cow like I told you last time because I um, I did like two-thirds of the repeats and I thought it was quite large enough the cow but then I wasn't sure about it so I just let it sit and then in the end I decided that I didn't really want to have a lot of leftovers I just go for it and just do it exactly as the pattern says to do it and I finished up and I used 81 grams I'm pretty sure so I had 19 grams left of this yarn and I'm a little bit tempted to see if I 
see if Meg has more of the pinnacle base so I could have another colorway and maybe use the 19 grams of this that I have left as a little border or something I think that would be nice so let's put it on so this is what it looks like on and I might actually keep that on <laughs> so it's it's so nice and soft this base and um, I think it will be great the color will be great to wear with a lot of things and I think the stitch pattern is beautiful and um, it was enjoyable to knit there has a lot of just stock in it around which is just neat neat because you knit in the round and then it has um, the cable and the lace but you do get like rest rows and um, just makes it enjoyable and it's really easy to sort of read your knitting and just um, and knit it and not have to worry too much about the pattern so I'm excited about having this all done and I am really happy that it makes me think about Meg and it makes me think about Christy down in Hobart who designed it and um, feels like a nice and friendly shawl <laughs> so that's that one and I like to say sorry for the last time um, if you watched last episode I had finished my shawl in the Ronya Roberts daughter uh, colorway and I kept calling it and I keep calling it the veggie patch shawl by quilt Caroline and um, or clothes line clothesline designs on Ravelry and it's the veggie garden shawl so I'm so sorry um, it's the veggie garden shawl so if you've been if you saw that and you've been trying to find that pattern you can't veggie garden shawl okay um, so I have been working on a few things last time I had started a pair of socks that I'm test knitting and these are a design by uh, Lisa, who's Paper Daisy One, I think, on Ravelry. So this is a test knit, and this is a sock she calls the Igneous sock, I think. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. Um, and I'm just about to start decreasing for the toe. And as you can see, I have swapped to a to Magic Loop. The whole leg I did on my nine, nine inch circulars and then when I did a heel flap and a gusset I did a magic loop because I haven't yet figured out how to do it on a nine inch circular comfortably and from here I have been this is where I finished the gusset and I've just kept going with my magic loops because I started using my nine inch circulars for something else this yarn is the Langevel Magic, which is a sock wool, it's a single ply, and it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. This is what the rest of the ball looks like. So that was 100 grams. Um, it's, it's quite woolly, and it's, um, it's not very soft. I see a lot of people using this wool for um, this yarn for shawls, and I'm, I I can't really see how that would be nice to wear around your neck. I think it'll be fine for socks, and I do like the very cool green colours on it. I think the pattern is beautiful, and they're really enjoyable to knit. They don't look like at all like plain vanilla socks, but they they like plain vanilla socks too to knit really. So they're really good grab and go project and um, I've been taking them out and about and this is pro probably it will be finished this weekend and then I can start the next one because yes in three weeks dash dash finishes and I need to finish some projects because I haven't even reached 3,000 meters yet and you remember how I said I was going for five I think or even seven well, I'm happy now if I reach my 3,000 meters. 
So that's one thing I've been working on, mostly when I've been out of the house and doing stuff or cooking. <laughs> the kitchen bench um, knitting. And then I started another test knit and I have not gone got very far on it yet so um, I'm sure I can show it I'm not I I'll check first with the designer before I show it the next time because um, then you'll probably be able to see more of the design at this point it's it just looks like any shawl really um, a stockinette shawl and I showed you this last time so this is in my new ganache bag which I really love it makes me so happy and this is my Oz sock base in the Princess Lily's colorway. And this was actually a skein that I had um, in my Etsy shop for quite a while and no one picked it up. And when the listing expired and, oh, it's a funny thing on there. When the listing, exp listing expired and I, was about to renew it I had this test need come up and I thought no I actually love that colorway so I'll just use it for me so that's what I did I took it off Etsy and used it for this sure and also I haven't actually knit anything really with this base or sock which is 80% Australian merino 20% uh, nylon I recently used both my white gum wool base the fingering one for the veranda shawl and for the um, veggie garden shawl in the Ronnie Roberts daughter colorway that was the um, Os fingering um, 100% Australian merino in the 112 grams gain so I thought it would be fun to um, use another base and I've used my New Zealand um, sock base several times actually I'll show you I'm wearing the socks out of uh, my New Zealand sock base these ones straight off my foot <laughs> and this is a self striping I did and I had one this game for me and one that I sold and um, it, I wear these a lot and I put them through the washing machine no problem see they still look great they're not fussy or anything they're perfect I'm so happy with that base, the New Zealand sock. Anyway, on with the sock and on with the shoe. Uh, so, I'm knitting this shawl, which is a test knit. And I'm only this far along. I think I have increased, so I have like half of the stitches on the needles to where I need to be to start the next part of the shawl. So, I have a way to go. And that's the back of it. Uh, so this is the Princess Lily's colorway. And it is that sort of tonal variegated pink with little specks of um, purple blue. Not very many speckles on this skein. But I actually like it so much that I have some more in a dye pot today. I made it a little bit darker and I put more speckles on it. So we'll see how that comes out. But that's the shawl that I'm knitting on my high higher needles, which I always enjoy for shawls or anything. Yes, yeah, so um, that's the main thing I'm going to work on from now, really, now that the cowl is all done. And for the test knit of the sock, I only need to have one sock done um, in the next week. Of course, I want to have both socks done. Um, in three weeks but I'll still uh, focus on this shawl because I want to have the test knit done fairly soon and I think with those things finished in three weeks I will have reached 3,000 meters but we'll see there's also spinning to come uh, okay um, the other thing that I started knitting on and um, probably shouldn't have started on it because I should work on the things that I am um, I'm, I'm test knitting sorry but I had these new self striping skeins 
and I, I have them back here actually. Um, when I went to Bendigo, uh, if you watched the last episode and if you remember, um, I met up with Shara, um, or Shara Made Podcast, and Melinda of Yonder Woman Podcast, and I wanted to give them something special when I met them, so I dyed up a self striping um, colourway for each of them. So the ones that I did, and you would have seen these on Instagram and in my Etsy shop if you have looked there. I oh know this is going to be funny, but this is um, the one that I did for Melinda, and I call it Perth, um, where Melinda is based. So this is a um, red, purple, grey, and sort of a variegated light, purple and grey and pink. So I did that one, and uh, for Shara, I did this colourway, which I call Yarra Valley, where is, which is where uh, Shara is um, based. And this is um, sort of a mustard yellow, turquoise, brown, and a variegated dusky pink, with some speckles in it. Um, so I did one each for them. Well, I did this for Melinda and this for Shara, and then I had another few to put in the shop. But what I tried to do when I, I dye these, I dyed three of each, what I tried to do was to put a little sample skein in as well, in just a superwash merino that I got from um, Spotlight a while ago. And um, because I didn't want to use a whole skein just for, for sampling, for just showing the stripe sequence. Um, so for the um, Jera Valley, and I have these in the beautiful bag that Shara gave me, and this is where my nine inch circulars went. So this is my mini skein that I made, and this is actually the Superwash Merino. So it's not the sock base that I, I have used for the actual proper skeins. Um, but I just wanted to see what it would look like knitted up and I wanted to be able to show what it looks like and um, I started knitting on this um, one eye and I couldn't stop because it was so much fun to see how it would look um, so that's what it would look like it has about four rows each of these more solid colors or semi-solid colors and then six rows of the more variegated color and I just really love this. So I've got this mini scan. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> but I think I'll just leave it until stash dash is over. Or maybe I'll yeah, I don't know, maybe I can make a little hand warmer. Probably have to stop now if I want to make another one the same because I only have this much. Um but yes, that's that self striping colourway. I think it's pretty cool. And then um, <laughs> I did another sample skein uh, for the Perth colorway, exactly the same, but um, something happened and the little skein came out without the red stripe. So it must have somehow got tangled in and yes. <sighs> mystery well it is quite a messy and tangly process so i'm not surprised but it was a bit annoying because i didn't have a sample skein of the perth colorway but what i did is that i took one of the skeins that i had i think i'll just make myself a pair of socks or make socks for my sister or someone else um so that's what that one looks like so here it's the white uh, or light grey variegated stripe that is um, six rounds and the purple, grey and red are four, stripe, uh, four rounds each. And often when I take a photo and video you can't really see the difference between the grey and purple but it, in real life there's actually quite a bit of a difference between those two colours. So that's what that one looks like and uh, yes I think I'll just continue on this one and make 
myself a pair of socks. So this is the same yarn based, the New Zealand sock that I just showed you, the socks that I'm wearing. Uh, and I have two or three pairs of socks made out of this base and I really like them. I like that I can just throw them in the washing machine. They don't lose colour, um, they don't feel, they don't get fuzzy, perfect. So I don't mind having another pair of those. And um, if I make them as a gift, I'll be really happy to um, give them away to someone as a present. So there were those two little things that, that I worked on. Okay, I turned on the lights in here because it seemed like the sun disappeared behind the cloud or something. So now I have some spinning to share with you. After Bendigo, and you could see that I bought a lot of fibre for spinning in, in Bendigo. So after that, I've been really itching to get behind the spinning wheel again and do some spinning. And um, I felt like I never got the time to do it. I wanted to watch the, the crafty class again. And then in the end, I thought, I'll just start. I'll just do it. I brought a spinning wheel into the kitchen and I just started and um, I didn't care too much about what I was doing. And what I decided to spin up from what I've got in Mendigo, I have some other old stuff that I maybe should have spun first, but I thought, no, let's grab something that I just recently bought that I'm really excited about. So this is um, a braid that I got from the Artisan Festival outside the Bendigo showgrounds. So this is Waiting for the Wheel. And this is a Superwash Merino Nylon Blend which I don't think I have ever spun before. I have another braid like that, but um, that I dyed myself, but it's been too precious to use it, so I haven't. But with this one, I thought I'll just go for it because one of the things that I really, really want to do is make myself a pair of hand spun socks. Um, so yes, I started spinning and really I couldn't stop. And this was only a couple of days ago. And this is what oh, it's about half of the I, I just split the braid in half or the the long top and it's goes sort of from yellow it had more yellow at the end here uh, to blues um grays and yellow or blue and not gray green and yellow or probably blue on top of yellow making green and then towards more and more blue and tealy blue. Um, so when I started spinning, it was first mostly yellow and then getting more and more green. And this is the second bobbin because the first bobbin I have finished spinning and this is what it looks like at the end. So it goes from the yellow to one end, sort of through green to a uh, tealy blue. And so it's a hundred gram total. So I split it in half, made sure I had 50 grams in each half. I'm spinning from one end to the other end without pre-drafting. It's, it's been really, really good fiber. With the, I think it's the nylon. It is, it does have a little bit of a funny feel to it, but that, that must be the nylon. Um, but yes, I'm just spinning without pre-drafting or anything from the yellow all the way through to the blue. And on here I have 50 grams. And um, because I want to make socks with it, I thought I should have more than a two ply. And because I'm making socks, I want to have 50 grams of each that are identical. So what I'll do is that I will Navajo ply. So I'll have this 50 grams on here, I'll have the other 50 grams on this one, and I'll just do a 50 gram Navajo ply um, skein from each of them. So that will make it a, a three ply, and um, it will keep the gradient going from the yellow to the blue. And I'll probably start with the blue at the toes, 
and go up and have the yellow in the cuff. Maybe? Sounds like a plan? We'll see how we go. Um, the only thing with doing a three ply is that you lose a lot of your metrage and for stash dash that's not a good thing. But that's all right, I'll reach my 3000. It's okay. Okay, the last thing for this episode and before we lose too much of the light, um, it's the big bag that I've received from Bendigo Woolen Mills. And I'm sorry about all the plastic stuff. So this is the big bag that I filled up and uh, I've just had a quick look, see, and now I want to show you what I got and what I plan to make with it. Because when I was there in the back room, I thought I'm not buying anything unless I know I have enough for a particular pattern. I got these two. Uh, five ply 100% pure merino uh, and they're very nice and soft it's 50 grams per ball and I don't have like a specific pattern but I thought they'll be nice um, color work beanies for my girls I just one color each for them um, because it is mm, really nice and soft F five ply so it's um, it's not going to be too hot it's quite good for uh, climate here and for spring so that that's what I was thinking but that might change yes it's a good price back room how could I not and then I wanted to buy enough um, so I could make a jumper each for my girls and um, I had a look at some tin can knits patterns and um, the one that I looked at before walking into the mills was the snowflake and that's a a jumper that has like a lace yoke in one color and then the sleeves and the body in a second color so for the main color i've got this pink oh, and even more plastic okay sorry and what I was thinking when I was choosing something was that I wanted something that both of them would wear. And my six-year-old is quite sensitive and she has a lot of beautiful woolen jumpers that I made for her. And she just takes them off straight away because she says they itch. So I got the... I can't remember what they call this space. I think it's discontinued. But it's a 30% wool, 70% um, cotton and some lycra in there, so it's a little bit um, stretchy. Um, but I thought that was a really cool pink. So I've got two of those, the 200 grams each. So I have um, 400 grams, which I think would be 800 meters, if I'm not incorrect. Anyway, and I think, no, hand wash, anyway. I should have enough for both of them for the the body and the sleeves of the snowflake by tin can knits and then I got this sort of light tealy blue in the same base to use for the lacy top it might be that I will make a totally different pattern. I just wanted an idea of how much I would need for them, for their sizes. So that was the pattern that I chose to sort of go with to um, get some sort of idea of how much to buy. Oh, actually, see, I didn't even remember this. I got a white one or a creamy white one as well, which means that um, one of them could have the white lacy yoke and one of them could have the tealy blue. I think I'll do, I'll make the large one first and then I'll see how much is left over of each color and I might be able to do a totally different color for the second one. We'll see. But they were a good price and don't have them on the website anymore, I think. And I just wanted to try that base and see if my six year old will accept wearing it. <laughs> And I really like the Tim Canitz patterns. Um, they're quite easy to knit and they're good fit. So um, I don't mind knitting them even if they're not going to get worn a lot. But my youngest will probably wear it when she's older anyway because she's good that way. And then I've got three 200 gram balls 
of um, something that sounded quite interesting. So I got, what's that, um, 600 grams. Yes, which should be 1200 meters. No, that sounds like a lot, but maybe that's correct. Um, this was something that I haven't seen before from the Bendigo Woolen Mills, and it was probably only a backroom thing. And when I talked to uh, people after I had been there and talked about what they had found at the at the mill, this was what a lot of people have bought. Um, this is a recycled fibres in mixed colours in an 8-ply DK weight. Um, and I think what it is, is all the sort of mill ends and things that they've just sort of all put together in this. That they've just put together in this um, beautiful colorway and the pattern that I was looking um, at for me to figure out how much I would need um, was the North Shore colorwork jumper by Tin Can Knits as well and this is a pattern that I only received today actually because I did a test knit for Tin Can Knits and often you receive a pattern of your choice from them after and that was the one that I chose so I thought this one I could use for the, the body and the sleeves and then find some other I probably have heaps of DK weight scraps and just like 100 grams and 50 grams of different colors that I'll use for the color work but I thought that was pretty cool with the recycled fibers and that they're making use of their um, well fiber waste really Yeah, so it's all natural fibers, it says, so very happy with that. And it, it was ridiculously cheap, <laughs> so how could I not? So yes, that's what arrived from the Bendigo Woolen Mills today, and uh, I have three jumpers to knit after Stash Dash. Um, so that's... Um, the episode for this time I think um, it's been great talking to you it's been great catching up it was nice um, to sit down and do this little um, show and tell with you after having a, a day of dyeing and spinning and um, vacuuming and other things <laughs> so um, thank you for joining me and um, I'll see you on Instagram or on Ravelry. Please leave a comment um, in the thread for the episode if you have any things you want to ask. If there's any comments about anything. Yes. Oh, okay. Now I don't know what to say. So now it's best to just finish off. So take care, everyone. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.